this exact lead code strategy got me offers from Apple, Microsoft, Meta, Amazon, and Salesforce. If we haven't met, hi, I'm Anjali Varangama. I'm a tech content creator on Instagram and LinkedIn, and now YouTube. I'm also a software engineer at Microsoft, and I previously interned for Facebook and AWS. So I've been through a lot of these internship and full-time interviews, and I had the exact plan in place to ensure I cracked them. And today I'm going to share the entire plan with you. As a CS student, my dream was working for a fang company because I'm more of a nine to five person. I didn't want a business that would consume my entire life. I just wanted to log off at five. And of all the nine to five jobs, the Fang companies were elite. They had the best pay, the best work-life balance, amazing benefits. And I just loved the prestige that came with it. It took me one year to go from someone who could just type hello world to someone who could crack almost every technical interview that was thrown at her. There were two main steps to my roadmap. One was getting the interview and then the second was cracking it. Despite the assumption that big tech interviews are really hard to crack, Getting the interview was actually the harder part. Every year, there's millions of students applying and there's only a few that are handpicked to actually go through the technical interview rounds. So if you are one of them, you want to make sure that you make the most of the opportunity and are 100% ready so that any technical question thrown at you, you're able to solve. My plan consists of the seven steps that I'm going to share with you today. One is the free resources that you can use to get started. Two, how to choose a programming language. Three, the exact list of topics that you need to master. Four, the popular concepts per topic. Five, how to approach a question. Six, how to prepare for a live interview. And seven, how to prepare for a specific company. Maybe you want to work for Apple and Apple only. Now, before we dive in, let me get a few things straight. Cracking the coding interview has nothing to do with how good of a software engineer you are. I know a lot of people who are amazing when it comes to the competitive coding contests, but they suck as software engineers. And on the other side, I also know a lot of senior engineers who have been working for the same company for 10, 20 years and are amazing at what they do, but they struggle with cracking technical interviews just because of the way they're structured. And your goal should be mastering both. You shouldn't just be good at interviews such that once you get in, you're not able to do the job, but just being a good software developer will not ensure you're able to crack interviews. Sure, there's a few overlaps, like if you know your data structures and algorithms well, it will help you with coding, but the overlap is negligible. The second thing is it took me one year to go from nothing to being able to crack all of these companies. It could take lesser time for you if you already know how to code. It could take more time if you have a full-time job and are very busy with a hectic schedule. So you just need to understand that this is not a get-rich-quick scheme. If somebody f promises you a four-week boot camp and then you'll just directly land $200,000 job, that's probably a gimmick. You need to give your all because good things do take time. With that said, let's start with step one, free resources. LeadCode.com is the most popular resource out there. It was my personal favorite. LeadCode pretty much has everything, the questions, the answers, the discuss section where you can look at others' answers. So it's pretty solid resource and it's free. You can also buy LeadCode Premium, especially if you want the company-specific questions. I never bought LeadCode Premium, but some people swear by it, so that's a personal choice. HackerRank and InterviewBit are also popular resources. I also love Geeks for Geeks for their tutorials, so when you're starting out, and especially when, the first, when it's the first time you're going through the sorting and searching algorithms, I recommend Geeks for Geeks because their articles are super detailed. Uh, and they explain things very clearly. If you prefer physical books, there is Cracking the Coding Interview. It's pretty good and very popular. This is also a book that I did thoroughly. I have solved almost every single question in there. I love the explanations and I am a pen and paper role I do understand better when it's in a book. I also loved the object-oriented design section, like the chapter in this book, because there's a lot of good resources when it comes to DSA. But when it comes to system design or object-oriented design, the resources out there are meant for senior engineers. So they're too complex. And if you're just going through the new grad or interview internship roles, you won't need to understand that complex design knowledge. Like, this is enough. So if you're in a hurry, I would start here. Now let's talk about the best programming language for cracking technical interviews. Python is arguably 
the best language simply because it is very easy to understand and write. It's very clean, concise. It has amazing libraries and you'll have to write less lines of code overall, which will save time. And time is of essence when it comes to interviews. However, using a language that you are most comfortable in is more important than just using Python. So if you're just starting out and are open to any language, I suggest you start with Python. But if you're someone who, you know, like me, when I was a student, I craved all of these interviews in Java. And then I switched to Python later. Because I had done a ton of projects in Java, I was doing my research in Java, my first internship had Java, so I was just more comfortable with the language, and I knew that instead of me just switching to a completely different language, it would be better if I just stuck to the language that I already knew very well. So in case you're already an expert at C++ or JavaScript or whatever else, I suggest you stick to that and learn Python on the side. And if you're comfortable switching, you can. But if you're not, that's completely okay. Don't feel pressured into switching to a different language. Whatever you decide, make sure you stick to one language throughout your prep, especially when it comes to like lead code, so that you're very fluent. And when you see a similar question in an interview, you are just immediately typing stuff out because you've already practiced in that language. Now let's move on to the exact list of topics that you need to master. You'll be mostly asked about data structures and algorithms. So you should focus on arrays, linked lists, strings, trees and tries, stacks, queues, graphs, dynamic programming and recursion, heap, hashing, so hash sets, hash maps, bit manipulation, and also sorting and searching. Within each topic are these basic set of concepts that are asked over and over again. So instead of really mugging up the question, you just need to understand the pattern so that if a similar question is thrown at you, you're able to solve it easily. For example, with linked lists, you need to be familiar with cycle detection, slow fast pointer. With graphs, you want to know BFS and DFS. There's all of these traversals and trees, etc. So I have made the exact list of subtopics within each topic, and I have added that free resource to the link below. So make sure you check it out. I just have the concept name and then a sample problem next to it. So you can try that problem out, really understand what it does. And the next time a similar problem is thrown at you, you should be able to solve it. Out of all the topics, dynamic programming is something that people seem to struggle a lot with. And it's one of those topics where once it clicks, it's very easy to do because most of the problems always fall in one of the subcategories under it. The DP section in the resource I mentioned below is a little more detailed than the other sections because of this. I wanted to make sure you truly understand dynamic programming. If you want more problem lists to solve from, you may have heard of the blind 75. They are the 75 most popular asked questions for big tech companies. But make sure you're aiming for quality over quantity. You don't want to aim for, you know, 1,000 lead code questions. 100 to 200 is a good number. It should cover every single concept. And after that, you should be good to go. So make sure you thoroughly understand every single question that you do. Another thing that you really need to focus on is the time and space complexity, because it doesn't matter if you're able to solve a problem if it's not optimal. And when it comes to any interview, one of the first conversations that you'll have with your interviewer is what your solution is and what the space and time complexity within that is. One thing I really like to do to truly understand a solution is even though I was able to solve a problem, I would still go through the lead code discuss section and look at how other students approach the problem. Most of the times there's two to three different ways that a problem can be solved. And in some ways, the time complexity is better, by doc but there's some data structure involved and takes up space. Or it's the other way around where there's no space required, but then the time complexity is higher. So there's pros and cons for every solution. And when you're talking to an interviewer, if you can present more than one solution and just talk through which one's better based on what the requirements are, it will look so much better than you simply just writing a solution down. I also personally had an interview experience where I was asked a question and I was able to solve the question in like 25 minutes, but the interview was 45 minutes long. So to make up for the rest of the time, the interviewer told me, how about you don't use the data structure that you just used and resolve the question with a different approach. 
So that is something that can be asked to you as well. And because I was in the habit of going through the discuss section, even though I solved the question, I had a lot of different opinions and a lot of different ways that I could solve every problem. So I was able to communicate with that with the interviewer. Now let's talk about how you can approach the plan, right? Let's say you want to spend one year like I did. You want to break the time down into subparts and set a goal for each part. For example, if you want to spend a year, you want to spend one month per topic maybe or 15 days. So let's say the first 15 days are focused on arrays, the next 15 on strings and so on. If you want an accelerated plan, maybe you want to do it for 12 weeks and you want to focus one week per topic. Within each topic, you want to focus on the easy question first and then move on to medium and hard. So let's say the current month is dedicated to graphs. You want to spend the first week doing just the easy questions and then you want to spend two weeks on medium and then the last week on hard. Your focus should be on solving as many medium questions as possible because those are the most frequently asked. Now, if you aim for the biggest tech companies, they may have a higher frequency of hard questions asked, but in general, when, you, when you're someone who's a student, you want multiple offers from different companies, your best shot is getting to the most amount of medium questions. The one rule you must follow is do not look at the solution until you've spent at least 30 minutes on the question. I know so many students who spend five minutes on a question and then they're just frustrated thinking that, oh, I can't solve this. Let me just look at the solution. They look at the solution and then they solve the question on their own. And this just goes on and on. And then two months later, they've forgotten the question that they did. So you don't want to fall under that category. You truly want to give your all. And if there's nothing you can do in those 30 minutes, just write a brute force solution. But force your brain to come up with a solution before you look at the answer. If you do end up solving it optimally on your own, that's amazing. Just go through the discuss section and look at the other approaches as well. But if you don't end up solving it, look at the solution and try it out yourself and mark the question so that you can come back to it after two months. If you want the exact tracker that I use to go through this process, it's in the description box below. It's a Notion tracker that you can use. So it would just have the lead code problem and the date you solved it and you can mark it in case it needs to be done again. Repeating the question is key. When you come back to the question after two months, you should be ideally able to solve it on your own. But if you can't, you want to come back to it in another two months and keep doing that until you're able to master all of the different topics. If you find a topic easy and if you're able to solve the medium or hard questions quickly, you can skip to the next topic. For example, I personally found trees and linguists very easy and focused most of my time on graphs and dynamic programming. So feel free to adjust the plan around as needed, but take your time. Do not look at the solutions directly and repeat the questions. Those are the three golden rules. The next step is how to prepare yourself for live interviews. And this might seem like a very simple topic that you want to ignore, which I did. And I was rejected from Bloomberg because of this. I was in the habit of just solving questions on lead code. And after I had a solution, I would hit run and then the errors would pop up and I would solve those errors and then the problem would go through. But in a real interview, they don't always have a coding interface. Sometimes they have a whiteboard. Sometimes they just share a Google Doc. And in those cases, you're not going to be able to hit run and find your errors. You're going to have to find your own errors and fix them by yourself. And similarly with testing, you're going to have to walk through your solution verbally with a test case that you produced. So if you're not in the habit of doing that, you might get rejected in a real interview. To solve this problem, you can do mock interviews with your friends or even in front of a mirror. All you want to ensure is that if you have a pen and paper or a Google Doc in front of you, you're still able to indent correctly. You're able to find your own mistakes. You're in the habit of speaking out loud and talking about what you're typing instead of just typing this whole solution out and then explaining it to, to the interviewer because you don't want those huge blocks of silence where you're just typing it out. The interview should be an ongoing conversation. You also want to set good variable names and method names. Like sometimes when you're on your own, you may be tempted to just use X, Y, and Z. 
But in front of an interviewer, you want to make sure that they understand your code very easily and they're not left guessing as to what variable name means what. Also, in a live interview, you don't want to jump into solutions correctly. You want to suggest a solution and write pseudocode if required in the first five minutes and walk your interviewer through it. So you want to discuss the time and space complexity. And if you have multiple solutions, you can show all of them with pseudocode and discuss the different time and space complexity in each cases and ask the interviewer what they prefer or what their requirements are. Jumping straight into coding is a very bad idea. Sometimes you may not have understood the question thoroughly or correctly. And sometimes the interviewers are deliberately vague because they are waiting to see if you're going to ask them questions so that they can clarify the requirements. So before you start, make sure you're asking a bunch of questions about the inputs, the potential edge cases, their expected time and space complexity, and you're writing the pseudocode and discussing with them as to whether it's a good enough solution for them before you jump into coding. Now, the last part of today's video is how to prepare for a specific specific company. This is very simple. If you have LeetCode Premium, they have company tagged questions. So you want to make sure that you do the questions for whatever company you're aiming for. For example, if you want to go to Google, make sure you do the questions that are asked by Google. But if you don't have LeetCode Premium, what I love to do is go on Glassdoor and look through previous interview experiences. There's a lot of candidates who have shared what they were asked. So I would just create a giant Google Doc and compile all of the questions that were asked by whatever company I was aiming for and then do those. This was super helpful when it came to the smaller companies because they have a tendency to ask the same questions over and over again. This was extremely helpful when it came to the smaller companies because they have a tendency to repeat the interview questions. So there were situations where I looked through Glassdoor before appearing for a small startups interview and there would be a couple of reviews on there saying, oh, I was this asked this question um, on trees or graphs or whatever. And then I would look at that solution before going to the interview. And then I was asked the exact same question in the interview. So make sure you go through Glassdoor and look at the questions that other candidates were asked. There is a probability that you'll be asked the same question. That was all I had for you today. If you found this helpful, please give a thumbs up because I'm a very, very new YouTuber and I completely rely on you for all feedback. So feel free to let me know what you want to see next on my channel. And I hope to see you in the next video.